Welcome to the unit assortment planning. This unit reviews the assortment planning process and comprises of two modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By the end of this unit, students will be able to understand the concept of assortment planning, review the principles of assortment planning. Describe the factors affecting the assortment planning. Describe the characteristics of assortment plan. The first module gives you an overview of assortment planning. A retailer's assortment is defined by the set of products carried in each store at each point in time. The goal of assortment planning is to specify an assortment that maximizes sales or gross margin subject to various constraints such as a limited budget for purchase of products, limited shelf space for display of products and a variety of miscellaneous constraints such as a desire to have at least two vendors for each type of product. The assortment a retailer carries has enormous impact on sales and gross margin and hence retailers give high priority for the assortment planning. However, no dominant solution has yet emerged for assortment planning. So, assortment planning represents a wonderful opportunity for academia to contribute to the enhancing retail practice. Moreover, an academic literature on assortment planning is beginning to emerge. Retailers engage in assortment planning because they need to periodically revise their product assortment. Several factors require a retailer to change their assortment. This includes seasons. The fall assortment for an apparel retailer will be different from spring assortment. And the introduction of new products and changes in consumer taste. Assortment planning is a relatively new but quickly growing field of academic study. The academic approach to the assortment planning problem rests on formulation of an optimization problem with which to choose the optimal set of products to be carried and the inventory level of each product. Decisions for each product are interdependent because products are linked in considerations such as shelf space, availability, substantiality between products, common vendors that is brands, joint replenishment policies and so forth. Merchandise planning is a process the merchandise planning process begins with the formulation of objectives, establishment of policies and implementation of procedures necessary to carry out department or store objectives. The planning process includes both dollar planning in terms of merchandise budgets and unit planning in terms of merchandise lists. Since effective planning requires accurate record keeping, Top management in conjunction with store buyers must plan and set specific policies for various types of records used in most retail establishments. A successful retail operation requires a merchandise assortment of the right type in right place and at right price. To accomplish this objective, activities such as profit and loss sales inventory, purchases, markups, markdowns and expenses must be planned at least 
6 months in advance by buyers and managers. This plan is called merchandise budget. It is also referred to as 6 month merchandise plan. So, what should be a well planned assortment contain? Factors such as quality, price range, brands, good taste, timing product life cycle and product mix effect assortment planning. Since no one retail store can carry all products available in the marketplace, decisions about which merchandise assortment to carry are not left to chance but are based on a number of important factors. This includes the type of retail institution, past sales records, determination of consumers wants, internal and external sources of information, type of goods offered and elimination of merchandise items. Assortment plans may be developed in two ways. The first method is though the use of basic stock list through the use of basic stock list and the second method is through the use of a model stock plan. All merchandise assortments can be planned by using either of these two methods. However, the method used depends on the kind of merchandise under consideration. When determining an assortment plans, consideration must also be given to the quantity of units to purchase. The last factor the buyer should consider is the breadth and depth of the assortment. Working with the money available in the inventory budget, the buyer must make a decision about the breadth of the assortment with respect to its depth and vice versa. Developing a balanced assortment must also be considered. Assortment depth may be defined as a characteristic of an inventory assortment offering limited versions of proved popular styles. This kind of assortment is spoken of as a narrow and deep assortment. Mass merchandisers usually use this method of stock inventory. Since it has been proved that most efficient from a cost point of view. The advantages of assortment depth are it enables faster turnover, it provides ease of stocking, it uses less room and display area, it provides ease of reordering, checking and receiving, it enables simplified counting and it helps avoid markdowns. A major disadvantage however is that consumers are not offered a wide selection of products and may have to shop in competing stores to find out what they want. Assortment breadth, breadth may be defined as a characteristic of an inventory assortment offering a large number of different categories or classifications but not a large stock of any of style. This is a broad and shallow assortment, stores and departments catering to middle and upper income consumers usually use this kind of inventory assortment. The advantage of assortment breadth are, it enables presentation of a wide variety of goods. It provides a high degree of stopping and pulling power and allows a slant to those customers of discriminating taste. A major disadvantage is that because of the shallowness of the assortment, alert and frequent reordering is needed to keep everything in stock. Consequently, this is a costly method of inventory. The balanced assortment may be defined as an inventory assortment using both assortment breadth and depth to develop an assortment that is balanced. For example, broad assortments are used early in the season when new styles are still being tested for consumer acceptance. However, 
narrow and deep assortments are used later in the season when demand is clearly defined. A balanced type of assortment may be used by mass merchandisers as well as by stores boasting a high fashion image. In fact, this may be considered a normal compromise. Breadth and depth comprise a retailer's product mix which may be defined as all the products and services offered for sale. Stores being the major factor for deriving assortment planning play a very major role by determining the stock versus sales and achieving budget planned for the season. Providing the end of season stock in hand. Providing the sales data for the season category wise, option wise, style wise. Following up with the planning team for replenishment and in season stock availability. Ensuring that the visual merchandise parameters are met as per season's plan. Keeping a track of fast moving and slow moving merchandise which gives insights to the planning and buying team in forecasting. Next, let us look at merchandise assortment planning in detail. The buying for a particular season happens in two seasons. Prior based on these factors, quantity and style options to be launched in a particular season, buying budget, vendor negotiations and management, stock in hand, sales data of the product and budget achievement versus allocation of the stock, replenishment quantity in percentages. After consideration of these factors, the buying team and planning team works out on the open to buy for the coming season. Open to buy determines the quantity to be purchased to the particular season and also helps in stock versus sales production. The buying team thus negotiates with the vendors about the costing of the merchandise. The final retail price is determined by the buyer based on the costing of the product, past sales and sale projection and profit margin. The buying team orders the quantity and sets the store hit dates for the stock. Once the buying team is done and the store hit dates are determined, the planning team allocates stock to the stores based on their previous sales data and sends the stocks accordingly. After the season launch, the regional planning teams are responsible for the replenishment and overall stock versus sales achievement. No aspect of retailing is more subject to close and constant scrutiny than the selection of merchandise assortments. The buyer must not only plan the selection of a particular merchandise classification or category but also must decide whether or not to offer the classification or category. Additionally, the buyer must also decide whether or not to offer the classification at all. Other important factors are quality of the merchandise for sale, choice of national brand or private stores, price range, good taste, proper timing, product life cycle and variety of product lines. We will now learn about each of these. Merchandise quality may be defined as the best or the finest material available or superior to that of the lesser quality or standards. Usually a high quality merchandise line will boast a high price range. While merchandise of low or inferior quality may be found in the lower price ranges. However, with the merchandising evolution brought about by the discounters, hypermarkets and catalog houses, good quality merchandise may be offered at low prices. 
merchandise quality reflects the image of the stores. Those stores that cater to clientele in the upper income bracket will offer merchandise representative of a high standards and excellent quality. Such merchandise will wear well, last longer or never wear out. On the other hand, a store's merchandise presentation may be felt to be junky, low quality or not worth the money. Perhaps this retail store was offering merchandise that was not consistent with the good standards of quality. The established store policy may call for offerings of national brands as well as private or store brands. National or standard brands are identified by name, reputation or symbol associated with certain product characteristics such as price, quality, fit and so forth. They are usually easily recognized by the store's customers and therefore readily accepted. Recognized brands are fruits of the loom underwear, Lee jeans, private brand merchandise carries the name and particular retail store where it is sold or a name used exclusively by the retailer. Examples are labels by Nordstrom, Lord and Taylor or Kmart. Private branding gives the buyer an opportunity to be exclusive offer a variety of different goods and avoid direct competition. Today, most stores have adopted the policy of offering a selection of popular brand items along with private brand items that are consistent with the store standards of quality and price. So, in Indian context, the national brands are for example, Mako, uh, Van Huizen, Louis Philippe, Arrow. Similarly, the store brands, for example, we have lifestyle offering life and etc. Then coming to price range and quality, usually interact with each other during the selection process. There is no specific correlation between price and quality. However, a general correlation does exist. Better quality merchandise is usually offered at higher price ranges. Since a store normally cannot offer merchandise of all price ranges, the management must determine particular price lines and suitable quality. The buyer must follow the pricing policies of the store when selecting the merchandise assortment. Good taste is not easily defined. What is in good taste for one individual may be in poor taste for another. The buyer must determine what will be aesthetically pleasing to all customers. Buyers are responsible for providing a selection of goods that will be appropriate in design, express the moods and feelings of the season and an appeal to the majority of the people. Trade papers and journals in both the hard goods line and fashion apparel markets are usually able to protect trends in consumer preferences. However, many buyers will relate costly mistakes resulting from inaccurate prediction of consumer likes and dislikes. Timing is of vital importance, especially when introducing a new item. The buyer therefore has the problem of deciding not only what to offer but also the best time at which to introduce new items. Each department must develop policy guidelines as to how often to experiment with new items and at what risk and how soon previously existing merchandise lines should be dropped from the stock. Maintaining a regular stock assortment is important to most types of goods. For example, staple convenience goods, shopping goods and specialty items must be available for ample replenishment. 
Even fashion lines must be available to ensure continuity of individual colors, styles, sizes and prices. However, factors such as changing consumer wants and needs, a higher standard of living, the growing youth market and the mass media have all contributed to the constantly changing retail environment. These factors as well as others have affected the life cycle of individual products. A product's life cycle may be divided into seven stages. They are research and development, introduction into the market, product growth and product decline and obsolescence stage. A product line may be defined as a broad category of products having reasonably similar end uses. The variety of product lines or product mix offered by any retailer will be based on type of retail stores or format. The variety of product lines or product mix offered may be limited as in the specialty store which offers only a few lines of merchandise or may be numerous as in department store. In assortment planning, the merchandise manager and the buyer together must determine where to place the greatest emphasis. Just as no one retail store can carry all the products available in the market, so no one store can offer all available merchandise categories. Therefore, decisions about which merchandise assortments to carry are not left to chance but are based on a number of important factors including types of retail institution, past sales records, customer wants, types of goods offered, elimination of merchandise lines. Merchandise assortment planning depends on the type of retail format. All retail stores will have a similar kind of merchandise assortment plan. They will not, they will not have a similar kind of merchandise assortment plan. A discount store usually will not offer high priced one of a kind types of merchandise. Similarly, a variety chain will not stock oriental rugs and a department store usually will not carry landscaping and gardening supplies. Customers usually expect to find merchandise consistent with store's image and merchandise that meets their individual needs and interests and reflects the store's reputation in the business community. Since no single store can be all things to all people, the buyer must work with certain limitations set by top store management. Such limitations are availability of capital resources, particular trade area served by the store, nature of the goods carried and amount and kind of competition represented in the trading area. These may affect the buyer in attempting to plan the merchandise assortment. The second factor that the buyer must consider when planning the merchandise assortment is the record of past sales. Sales records provide valuable information about sales made and lost, returned goods and customer complaints. Numerous records are available that can supply the sales information such as unit control records, special promotion records and files from the adjustment office. Personal observations on the selling floor as well as conversations with salespeople will also give valuable information for assortment planning. As there will be fluctuations in the sales of different product lines from year to year and from season to season, a wise buyer will use past sales record information for planning sales in any given season. The buyer's sales records will contain notes that refer to weather conditions, economic trends, labor strikes, supply conditions, market opportunities and whatever else affected sales activity 
in a particular period. A third factor a buyer must consider when planning the merchandise assortment is the consumer. With the growth of middle income group, a more affluent society has developed. Thus, there has been a greater demand for goods which has led to the quicker product replacement and an increase in the impulsive buying. Today, the consumer can afford new and attractive variations of a particular item or product. As a result of having more money to spend, an increase in the consumer education and employment, the modern shopper is more critical in merchandise selection. Shoppers read labels carefully to check the warranty or guarantee and compare products before buying. A fourth factor the buyer must consider when planning the merchandise assortment is the type of goods offered. This depends on the merchandise policies of the store. Merchandise can be categorized as fashion goods or seasonal goods. Merchandise can also be classified according to the amount of consumer shopping efforts such as convenience goods, shopping goods and specialty goods. Fashion goods may be defined as merchandise that appeals to consumer for a short period of time and has relatively short life cycle. Fashion products may have cyclical sales due to changing tastes and lifestyles. A buyer who purchases these lines of goods will not be influenced by seasonal changes as much as the buyer of soft goods. Fashion apparel and accessories will change with each new season, that is every 3-4 months, while the buyer of hard goods will have two market seasons, that is one every 6 months. Seasonal goods are the products that sell well over non-consecutive time periods. They may be defined as merchandise that is in demand only a certain times of the year or for a particular season of the year. Buyers will plan assortments for seasons such as fall, back to school, spring, summer, transitional and resort. Assortments may be planned for a special promotional events such as Mother's Day, Father's Day and so forth. Convenience goods can be defined as those goods consumers expect to have readily available at a convenience location. These goods are usually inexpensive and may include such products as candy, notions, small housewares, drug items, hardware items and beauty and medical aids. Convenience goods can be further classified into staple, impulse and emergency goods. Staple goods may be defined as goods that should always be in stock since they are demanded year around. Never out goods is a term used synonymously by the buyer. Staple goods are found in many types of retail stores. Notice the kind of merchandise found by the checkout counter of a food market or a variety store. Here one will find razor blades, film and deodorant among others. Impulse goods may be defined as goods purchased by consumers on impulse. That is with little logical thought impulse goods may include snack foods, costume jewelry, cigarettes and whatever else appeals to the impulsive mood of the consumer. Emergency goods may be defined as goods purchased by consumers when a severe need arises. For example, a sudden downpour may cause you to purchase an umbrella from a street vendor or a home accident may cause you to purchase a gauze or adhesive tape from a local pharmacy. Shopping goods may be defined as those products for which a consumer will accept no substitute and about which consumer does not have a thorough knowledge. 
This includes merchandise for which there is no replacement or no alternative in the mind of the customer. Since consumers usually do not have a thorough knowledge of the item, they will go from store to store and check different prices, colors, product features, styles, guarantees and warranties as well as other characteristics. Usually the consumers will decide on a brand of merchandise to purchase. Thus, the retail buyers make an effort to provide the customer with specific information and advice on the product sought as well as offering deals. Customer service, prompt delivery and credit terms. Examples of shopping goods are television sets, stereo equipment, radios, cameras, automobiles, small appliances, gift items and furs. Specialty goods may be defined as those goods of which the consumer will usually accept only a well-known brand and of which the consumer has full knowledge. For example, a buyer of a fine china is providing specialty merchandise. The consumer may wish to increase a set of china wear and will return to the store for the particular pattern or design. Buyers of specialty goods will plan to have as wide an assortment as possible. Since consumers will surely be satisfied once they locate the specific item. Examples of specialty goods are brand name items, silverware, furniture, pianos, watches, kitchen appliances, household appliances and cosmetics. The final factor the buyer must consider when planning the assortment is the elimination or dropping of certain items from the merchandise plan. As more items are added to the assortment, a limit on what can be carried by the store or department considering the financial investment involved and the amount of space required to store the goods becomes evident. Therefore, the buying specialist must include the elimination of certain items in the assortment plan. The buyer must also consider whether or not the items to be dropped are fashion goods. Since due to their short selling life, such goods must be eliminated before they become out of style. If the goods to be dropped are staple type of merchandise, they must be eliminated before they become obsolete or outdated. Assortment plans are developed in one of the two ways. The first method is through use of a basic stock list and the second method is through use of a model stock plan. All merchandise assortments can be planned by using either of these two methods. However, the method used depends on the kind of merchandise under consideration. In a retail store, basic stock lists are composed of staple types of merchandise. For example, in a variety store, staple goods may include toothpaste, deodorants, socks, underwear, detergents, light bulbs, and sewing threads. The list will specify in detail the items to be carried in stock. When planning staple merchandise assortments, buying specialists should consider homogeneous and heterogeneous staples, seasonal and non-seasonal staples. Homogeneous staples may be defined as staple goods that are all of the same size, color, fabric, and style. Homogeneous means the same or similar. For example, light bulbs are manufactured by Westinghouse and General Electric. The 100 watt bulb produced by each company are alike in that they are the same size, provide the same amount of light and fit into the standard light bulb sockets. Heterogeneous staples may be defined as staple goods that are alike but not identical. 
heterogeneous means containing dissimilar elements. For example, shoe laces of same length and width will come in assorted colors, patterns and texture. Though they all perform the same function, hair pins or bobby pins of the same size come in different colors to be worn by the blondes, brunettes and redheads. The buyer must plan the staple stock according to the similarities that exist among the staple goods available as well as differences. A second factor the buyer should consider is seasonal and non-seasonal staples. Items offered in the staple category should be available at all times of the year or at least during the recurring seasons of demand. For example, some staples may be in demand regularly for years and not affected by the seasonal variations. This is true for hardware, foodstuffs and toiletries. On the other hand, many staples tend to be seasonal. Since sales will vary throughout the year or during specific times of the year in a manner that is predictable. For example, Easter egg decoration may be staples only during the Easter season. Christmas tree trimmings during the Christmas season. Halloween costumes during the fall season and sky poles during the winter season. The model stock plan is the second method a buyer may use to develop the assortment plan. A model stock may be defined as the desired assortment of stock broken down according to predictable factors such as classification, price, material, color and size based on consumer demand. The model stock plan is used by the buyers of fashion goods to plan fashion assortments. This is done since Unlike staple goods, fashion items are identified by general characteristics rather than by specific details. In planning a model stock, accurate sales and stock information is necessary to achieve maximum sales from the merchandise assortment. The buyers of a fashion apparel must be guided by current trends as well as by previous sales patterns. The buying specialist will develop a specific buying plan that gives consideration to what to buy, when to purchase and when to have merchandise delivered. For the model stock plan to be fulfilled, the model stock plan is used to plan the ideal assortment. Thus, it will include an assortment of staple goods, fashion goods, and seasonal goods. The model stock plan will include a fashion assortment. Fashion stock in both apparel and home furnishings is the most difficult of all classes of merchandise to plan for because of the many choices of styles, colors, materials, vendors and manufacturers and many new items available. Since fashion goods have a short life cycle, the risks in fashion buying are high. Five characteristics of fashion merchandise will assist the buyer in determining the fashion assortment. They are classification, price, size, material and color. In planning by classification, the buyer will break each general rule of merchandise down into subdivisions. For example, furs can be broken down into fun furs, expensive furs and fur accessories. The consumer demand for merchandise in each classification is usually predictable by the buyer. Who can determine fairly accurately the quantity of merchandise to buy? Often, further subdivisions may be used if the subdivision becomes too cumbersome. For example, first tolls may be further subdivided into expensive, medium priced and low priced within fur classification. Retailers will store a variety of price lines within each classification of fashion goods. Since consumers represent many income levels, 
the buyer will plan the fashion assortment to include at least their price lines tailored to the income brackets of the customers who patronize the store. Such planning will enable customer to have a choice in the price of the item bought. Once the price norm in each classification is determined, the buyer can predict with considerable accuracy future demands. In lower and higher price ranges as well as a specific price range. Size is an important factor with most fashion merchandise. This is true not only of fashion apparel but also of many home furnishings. The buyer must determine customer demand for each size and buy accordingly. The size distribution of the items sold during past season is usually an indication of future demands. Knowledge of textiles and the kind of materials available with the help of buyer determine customer wants. For example, wide customer acceptance of cotton denim during past decade caused retail store buyers to stock fashion apparel such as jeans, hats, swimsuits and handbag made of denim. Knowledge of customer acceptance of materials will assist the buyer in stocking a well-balanced fashion assortment with proper emphasis given to particular materials in demand. Color plays an important role in the selection of fashion goods. Since each new season popularizes specific color combinations, the buyer can predict the color and color combinations and most consumers will seek. Basic colors usually account for majority of sales. However, fashion colors or seasonal colors have promotional value and are used to attract not to overstock that which is new and popular while neglecting the standard and more conventional colors. For example, Indian fashion merchandise stores carry five categories. There are five major categories which the fashion store deals with menswear, women's wear, which includes ethnic and western wear, then kids wear, footwear and accessories. As an Indian retailer, these seasons are followed by the fashion store. For spring, the type is minor. The season is from January to March. The merchandise line includes half sleeve t-shirts, kurtas with light prints and casual shirts. For summer, the type is major. The season is from March to June. The merchandise line for this season includes t-shirts, shirts, short kurtas with summery colors and prints, shorts, capris and casual denims. For pre-autumn and the type is minor, the season is from July to September. The merchandise line includes t-shirts, shirts, denims and trousers. For the festive season, the type is minor. The season is during September and October. The merchandise line is mainly ethnic. For the winter season, the type is major. The season is from October to January. The merchandise line during this season includes sweaters, heavy t-shirts, shirts, coats and other winter centric products. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, the buying specialist must exercise careful planning techniques when selecting the merchandise assortment. Since the success of retailing depends on accurate merchandise assortment planning, certain important factors must be considered when planning the assortment. Quality, price, range, brand, store or private, good taste, proper timing, product life cycle, product mix and assortment strategies. Decisions as to which merchandise assortment to carry or not left to chance but are based on a number of important factors. These factors are type of retail institution, 
past sales records, determination of consumer wants, type of goods offered for sale, and elimination of merchandise lines. The buyer will work within the limitations set forth by the store management. The limitations to consider are availability of capital resources, particular trading area served by the store, nature of the goods carried, and the amount and kind of competition represented in the trading area. However, to be effective, they must contain a breakdown of specific information. The type of goods considered in the merchandise assortment will depend on the type of retail store. Merchandise can be categorized as fashion goods or seasonal goods. Merchandise can also be classified according to the amount of shopping effort such as convenience goods, shopping goods and specialty goods. The plan for the merchandise assortment may be developed in one of the two ways. The first method is through use of basic stock list. The second one is model stock list. Thank you.